Call the meeting to order. We're going to try and expedite as many things as we can today because, um, as some of you might know, that I am um, athletically, or used to be athletically inclined, and the BCS game is tonight. And it would be heresy to go way past 8.30. So um, we'll try to get a, go along as quickly as we can. Uh, Mr. Boyce, call the meeting to order. Okay. Salute to the flag. Stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Laws of 1975, this meeting has been duly advertised in Hess Park Press, issue of November 30th, 2011. All municipal clerks of the townships and boroughs within the regional high school district have been duly notified and the requirements of posting of notices have been met. All right. We come to um, minutes approval, last meeting? No minutes, okay. Superintendent's report. Uh, just a, a few brief items. Uh, typically, this has been a, a work session agenda, and it is uh, this evening with only uh, very few emergent items on, on the board resolution list. However, uh, due to the winter break, we're a little off uh, with our work session schedule, so our committees will be meeting hopefully over the, uh, uh, the next couple of weeks prior to the uh, January 23rd uh, board meeting. Uh, just a, a, a few brief items to report. Um, we had a terrific uh, holiday season with our, our concert band performances throughout the district. Uh, some really amazing uh, performances right up until the break. Um, we are presently throughout the district, our, our six buildings are engaged in uh, eight, hosting eighth grade orientations. Um, a few of those have occurred and there's several more um, on tap o over the next uh, two this week and then uh, one next week. Uh, very, very well attended uh, throughout, very well put together. Um, we are also uh, looking at um, a new teacher evaluation model as part of the state mandate to uh, select one of four frameworks uh, to work within um, as a school district. Uh, so in that, in, under that guise, uh, I attended a, uh, a presentation at Monmouth Regional High School last Friday. Uh, where the folks from Teachscape uh, went over their their product, um, it's an interesting timeline. Uh, you know, the state is uh, incredibly aggressive in, in what they want done on that framework, and in conjunction, we have the uh, Common Core standards that are being implemented with Park, kind of simultaneous to that. So there are two very very uh, laborious uh, processes that we're going to have to go through as a school district, which we're. Um, we're, we're sort of ratcheting up for at this point in time. There's a group of about seven of us who are attending a presentation on January 31st with an overview of the four models uh, that the state has said you must select one of these four. So uh, that's all on tap. There is, uh, on January 17th, the Commissioner of Education is going to address the uh, superintendents throughout the state uh, and give his uh, state of the state uh, address of New Jersey public education. So uh, I'll pl I plan on attending that and uh, hopefully there's uh, something interesting to note. Okay, thank you, Ms. Simon. Uh, board reports? Uh, we had a couple towns reorganized um, in Manalpin. Susan Cohen is now mayor. In Freelboro, Nolan Higgins is now mayor. In uh, Freel Township, Anthony Emiano is now mayor. Um, and in Marlboro, the town council was reorganized and Jeff Cantor was elected council president. Thank you, Marianne. Any other board reports? Seeing none, we come to the I, thing. I, I, I gotta read that. Oh, we have a, just one second. So I have a, a statement to read uh, prior to public participation. Uh, bear with me, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit lengthy. Um, I, obviously, as, as folks are well aware, there have been certain changes at Manalp in high school. Uh, at present time, we have an acting principal in place. Uh, in addition, one of the assistant principals is on temporary assignment at Freehold Township High School, and an assistant principal previously at Township High School is on temporary assignment at Manalapin High School at this point in time. As most of you already know, the board and administration have a very limited ability under the law to discuss personnel issues in public. 
especially until the board is ready to take public action. No action with respect to any of these moves will be taken by the board tonight, either in public or in private. However, there are some aspects of the events which I will discuss publicly. First, each of these still temporary actions was taken by me, superintendent, directly. I've also fulfilled my legal obligations to the board president and to the members of the Board of Education in order to keep them appropriately informed of my actions. Second, these personnel actions derive from a set of circumstances which is still under investigation. Although my office, with the assistance of counsel, has moved very swiftly and efficiently, there's still a great deal of work to be completed on our end. Third, I fully understand that these personnel actions are very important to the Manalpan students, parents, and staff, and are a stress to the school community. I'm apologetic that I cannot say more at this time. Decisions of this nature are never taken lightly. Our actions were driven by concerns about specific events, and I'll be clear here, none of these events have anything to do with the welfare of any children in the building. These actions were taken as, uh, as essential and are in the best interest of the Freehold Regional High School District. As we speak, Manalpan High School is functioning very, very well with no disruption of any kind. During this meeting, the law requires that we pay due deference to the privacy rights of any effective staff and will abide by the law. Moving forward, circumstances will dictate how much more, if anything, I'm able to report at the next Board of Education meeting or in subsequent meetings. I bring all of this to the public's attention this evening, prior to public comment, so that you will understand that questions about these events will be impossible to address here and now, and that there's no disrespect intended to the public by any perceived lack of information. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sun. And now we come to the uh, more important part of the meeting, we have public participation. And we have a, a person who uh, has left us for a while, but has come back for a return engagement. <laughs> Helen Lockberg. <laughs> Wherever you feel more comfortable, Helen. Thank you for such a warm welcome. Happy New Year. Thank um, you. Helen Hochberg, Marlboro, New Jersey. Here we are, seven months later, since I asked my repeated question of the board and yet there is no answer. Has there been a decision rendered by the judge in the settlement of the insurance company regarding the litigation of Bonnie Sue Rosenwald that has cost the taxpayers in the district $247,000? Once again, I am hopeful that the board will recognize the question and get an answer to the taxpayers as quickly as possible. John. The, the only update I have is that the, the, I had I forwarded you the name of the uh, presiding judge, uh, but that the matter is still yeah. not complete, pending. And Ron, I want you to know that uh, no one on the board participates in the judicial system, or we would have had it settled a long time ago. I just want to let you know that. Okay. And next we have G L O R I A, Gloria. Happy New Year, Mr. Hershey. Same to you, Ms. Gloria. Okay, I just have a few questions here. On November 28th, uh, Mr. Sampson presented a report on the violence and vandalism in the district. I'd like to know, or the public should know, what actions have the administration and the board taken to address the growing problems of violence, drugs, and vandalism in the district? It was only a presentation then. Now, I read also about this four-part workshop that will be presented by this parent university, am I right? How is this going to be paid? Is this a grant money or is it coming from our budget? Also, I feel that this workshop, I read a part, part of that, and I think the younger grades uh, up to middle school will greatly benefit from this workshop. I think the high school students is a little bit I, I don't want to use the word late because sometimes it's even difficult to deal with our teenage children, especially the ones in high school. And I think this kind of uh, workshop will be so beneficial to the young students up to middle school. Um, on the 4-H of the agenda, I was wondering if Mr. Sampson can give a sort of explanation to that. Um, also, where are we, where is the district in terms of the uh, budget preparation. Is Mr. Uh, Messenger gonna give an update to that? 
as far as how its budget is being worked out at this point, because it is now January. I just don't want to be confronted by last minute where we don't even understand what the budget is, you know, what, what is in the budget at all. Now, the, uh, my last question on the uh, attachment. I don't know how I would look at it. I thought it was a joke. There was only one item on the attachment, and this is about the reimbursement of $5. I'm thinking, for Mr. Samson, I don't know what that was and how it was brought up that way. Uh, $5 could have come from a petty cash, either from his petty cash. No, that's illegal. Illegal. They couldn't have. But like I'm saying, the paper involved on reimbursing you $5, I would have been willing to put $5 on the table tonight. But I felt that reimbursing like that little and, uh, and putting into one attachment, I don't know what to say, but uh, I just hope that in the future, we will not be wasting our time into reimbursing a dollar. Thank you. Uh, in all candor, Ms. Close, in the future, I will continue to follow the regulations of the state of New Jersey, which requires us to put that out there publicly. That it's just a, it's a requirement. Uh, anytime you travel for a workshop or you attend a workshop that has a cost associated, it's supposed to be formally approved by the Board of Education. So that's, that's just the, the process. The commissioner charged $5. I'm not sure why for his convocation. I, I completely agree with you. As a matter of fact, the um, and because it's before the next board meeting, that's why it's on there. Be approved now. I, your point's well taken. I agree with you. It is what it is. Transparency, Gloria. Okay. Here we go. Where? Oh, a couple questions that we need to answer. Gloria, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know that I can, uh, I can do a couple of them. The uh, parent university, yes, that is being paid with grant money. Um, and budget development is at the administrative level right now. Uh, the administrative team, uh, led by Mr. Sampson, is you know, pulling that together. The governor's budget address is scheduled for February 21st which means we'll have state aid numbers no, it's within 48 hours of the governor's, that's the statute on that, so by the, tw the 23rd of February. Uh, and then a matter of days after that will be the introduction of the tentative budget to the Board of Education. So that's the, the timeline that's before us on budget development. Could you also let us know what kind of um, uh, um, method is going to bring the public into also in the budget? In the budget situation. We just don't want to be smart like every year, get the whole figure like that. We want to be part of the process. I know it's impossible from the beginning, but I just don't want to be part of the end. I want to understand more the middle. Um, and you know me, Mr. Boyd, I'm always there for the budget, but I get frustrated year after year. And Ms. Close, my door is. I know, I, I might, but my door is always open to sit down with you and go through it in further detail if you'd like. Um, and that offer has always been on the table and will continue to be. I know. John, you want to answer the one about the H4? Sure. Good evening. Uh, thank you for asking uh, the question about the settlement agreement. One of the terms of that settlement agreement uh, designated as confidential and involves a personnel matter. So although I'd love to discuss with you the terms of that agreement, all I can indicate uh, to you is that it involves an employee, it resolves a matter to the best interests uh, of the district, uh, and that individual is mutually agreed upon. And uh, involving an employee and being confidential, uh, we're not at liberty to discuss it any further. Sir, I just want to clarify, is it when you come to a decision that becomes a public knowledge, the public should be able to ask questions once you make a decision? It's just like you're bringing, you're bringing the whole thing to closure now because you have what you call a settlement. Wouldn't that be considered as a open to the public now, the information? Is it for paying the Briar State University? And no, it, no, it is not. Yeah. It, it has nothing to do with Briar State. But I, I thought that when you just settled a case, it right. public knowledge. Sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. 
This involves an employee. It's a personnel matter. Uh, so by its nature, it would be confidential. And again, one of the terms uh, designate this as confidential. Would it be open to the public when it's fully settled? At, at this time, it, it is not uh, uh, subject to public uh, discourse. Okay. All right. Uh, this brings us to uh, the uh, agenda. And uh, anyone have an objection to taking H1 to L1 and one shot? Thank you. Okay. So, uh, motion for the agenda? A motion. Thank you, Bill. Do we have a second? Yeah, second. Liz, second. All those in favor? Uh, oh, discussion, I'm sorry. Discussion. I'm rushing. Sorry, shouldn't rush. All discussion? No discussion. Roll call. Presentation and violence, drugs, and violence. There was one other question. I'm sorry, Lord, there was a question. We forgot that one question. Yeah, no, it, we've got a we get a motion in a second. Oh, okay. Can we come back to that? We'll come back. We'll come back to that. Okay. Sorry, Lord. Roll call. Mr. Acetola. Yes. Mr. Bruno. Yes. Mrs. Canario. Yes. Mrs. Lavin. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Messinger. Yes. Mr. Mazik. Yes. Mr. Moses. Yes. Okay. On H1 through H4, uh, L, uh, I'm sorry, H1 through L1, any discussion? We just did that. We did it. We're voting? Yeah. Voting. You all voted? Wow, well, this is great. Let me answer this. We have a question. Oh, we have a question. We've got to respond to that question. Oh, we have a question. It's looking good. It's looking good. So, so yeah, the, so the response to the, um, the, the question about the um, what are we doing to combat the uh, increase to um, violence vandalism as a result of the the uh, violence and vandalism report that I gave on November 28th um, and I said during that that presentation that uh, any any school district in America that that says we're not dealing with these issues um, you know has their head in the sand and we fully understand that you know as a, as a matter of fact, uh, today, uh, as, as one instance, we had a, a two-hour workshop with a number of our critical uh, folks in each building um, to go over the updates to the harassment, intimidation, and bullying policy where we went through step-by-step step, uh, how to identify these, these elements, how to report them, how to address the parents uh, as, a, as a proactive measure to the, the, the shifting state. Um, guidance around that area um, on a day-to-day -day basis and and I said during that presentation on November 28th that the second component the state mandates that we present on this twice a year now uh, and that's a change it used to be uh, once a year and it used to be in the fall and it would just be kind of your your, your statistics for the year um, and I said during November 28th that what I wanted to do was that the presentation on November 28th would would tell the story of the district in terms of where we are with the numbers of offenses uh, and then the presentation in the spring would really be more, much more focused on uh, the various programs, clubs, activities, uh, and systemic uh, factors that we have within each building. Um, so what we do on a, on a day to day basis, uh, I think, um, is spend a, an inordinate amount of time uh, in a positive way trying to combat these things. And, and whether that's through uh, use, utilizing um, our SACs in the building, our guidance staff, uh, the numbers of clubs that we have that um, speak to uh, preventing behavior of that nature, to uh, making good decisions. Um, we spend a lot of time and resources on it. I think that we're honest enough to say that that still doesn't stop every student from making a poor decision. Um, and it still doesn't, it, you know, it still doesn't replace you know, poor models from somewhere else and where those kids might learn those decisions. Um, but I think, uh, and, and I was uh, very candid when I said that I thought that um, the numbers would rise as a result of the new HIV legislation because folks are much more attuned to what's happening. And just the level of detail today in the discourse over um, is, is, the, is this action uh, harassment, is it is it just, um, is it bullying, what, what is it? Um, and the awareness on the, on the staff's, um, the staff end to all of this 
you know, every staff member has to have two hours of training around this. So um, I think, if anything, schools, and I'm not just saying the Freehold Regional High School District, although I think we do a terrific job with it, but school districts throughout the state of New Jersey are spending a significant, a significantly higher amount of time on addressing these issues than they have in the past. Um, it doesn't mean it's not going to occur. But I, I do think that uh, we have put a lot of uh, time and effort into the resources uh, around that. And Dr. Hazel, if you, I don't know, if you want to highlight a couple of the particular clubs and, and, and so on, because you put together the nice report about it on a monthly basis, but it, it's, um, it's something we take very, very seriously. Yeah, incidents that do occur in our buildings, they're assessed by Mr. Sampson and myself. Um, our principals and our administrators in the building actually take a very proactive stance in designing student programs, professional development for their staff. If there is an ongoing issue where they see a surge of, of a particular uh, type of incident in their building, uh, they're extremely proactive. Mr. Sampson is absolutely correct. I mean, today, principals and assistant principals came together. Um, it's now halfway through the year to really digest and review um, the HIB policy, our practices within the districts, our reporting procedures, um, but even above and beyond that, you know, what can we do to, to better educate the students and the parents on this very important law? And um, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of the work of the administration and the assistant principals in the building. It's not just a matter of taking a report and just reporting numbers, but what do we do with that data? How do we take a, a proactive position in our building to assess what's going on in our buildings and then wrap it around programs for our students and professional development for our staff? And that's what we're actively working on. And I know Mr. Sampson is looking forward to that presentation in the spring where the public could actually hear um, all of the good things and all the proactive measures that take place in our buildings um, to keep our buildings safe, um, to keep our students um, actively engaged in their educational program. And um, they do a fa fabulous job with that. Sure. I know you mentioned uh, purely the, the uh, Haney policy, but I found though that I forgot my other folder. I have a lot of report here about drugs in Malibu, and that's what I'm also concerned about. I know you're talking about violence and drugs. Uh, so anything, well, anything, anything that we report. But the, the, the drugs, you know, that's not, those are eyes on that. It's a very big problem. And like I said, I have several papers, but I grabbed it. You know, I made a mistake of grabbing the wrong notebook. But I have a folder where I downloaded all the police report uh, containing drugs that occur in my high school. And that's one thing I do want to put more attention also, aside from the food policy. Uh, like I said, in the past, we did discuss that, that maybe we can uh, work well with the police department. Maybe we can ask them to bring uh, a door to escape the building, the lockers. But there was um, an up, you know, the former administration did not go for that. But somehow, when I read like this, I know we have a big problem in drugs. And it, it, it really saddened me that, um, you know, like my school is really portrayed with a lot of drug problems. Because, like I said, through the reports that I'm downloading, and like I said, when you talk about violence and the other thing, I would like you to also please pay attention to the drug abuse that is going on, the drug abuse that is going on among our students. Let's not close our eyes on that, because as we all know, that's one of the biggest problems we have right now, the teenagers. And please look into that. I appreciate it. Yeah, we, um, as I think Mr. Sampson stated, I mean, um, none of our administrators, I mean, our head is not in the sand, and, and we do assess all of our data and work you know, very closely on designing programs, group counseling for students, interactions you know, with families, setting up with them with appropriate resources um, to get help um, you know, for their child and their family. Um, that is on an ongoing basis. But yes, we absolutely look at the data as a whole as a district and, and tailor make programs for each of our schools um, to combat an issue. And that is an area of concern for this administration also. Okay, uh, old business. 
Mary Ann, new business? Mary Ann got some old business. Carl! <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sitting here and I see uh, Mr. Moore and Mr. Dominion in the audience, and I just want to uh, remind everybody, please, this is the opportunity to comment on anything in high school, high school system through the strategic plan. So please take that opportunity and, and spread the word out there. We want to get as much public input as possible, as much administrative input, and as much teacher's input as possible. So I just wanted to remind everybody about that. Well done, Carl. Thank you. <laughs> New business. You up, you know, for the game. I know, Carl. What can I tell you? New business. Marianne. Um, I want to make a motion that we send a letter to the Freelboro Arts Council on behalf of the board making the following points. Mr. Boyce, I'll give them to you so you don't have to write them down. Um, we thank them for involving our high school students in the creation of the community mural at 63 East Main Street. Our students worked over the summer and dedicated many hours to this mural. Point number two, we think that this was a prime example of how we can partner our high schools with the community. Opportunities like this allow students to shadow professionals such as the mural artist Matt Holm and encourage our students to use their talents to promote community spirit. Point three, we find it disheartening that in light of the fact that it was painted on removable panels, that such a mural that our students worked on was painted over by the owner of the property without care to the preservation of art or the willingness of the council to save the piece. And the last point, we hope that if the council ever chooses to restore the mural or repaint a mural in another location in Freehold, that they continue to work with our students and allow them another chance to see their work provide a sense of joy and pride to the community. And I'd like to add an addendum to that. Uh, as I told Marianne, I would, I would very willingly vote for that as long as they add the word dirtbag to the name of the gentleman who painted over the paintings. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It was done for the community. Yeah. It was, was something separate. Yeah, they this were was both in freehold, but they were separate. <clears throat> separate oh, this this was a project that the students did. I need a second. Second, and then discussion. Right. We have a motion, so we need a second. Second. Discussion. Amazing. Seeing none. Take a vote, Mr. Poisson. Mr. Asatola? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mrs. Canario? Yes. Mrs. Lavin? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Messinger? Yes. Mr. Tomazic? Yes. Mr. Moses? Yes, and yes on dirt, dirt bag of addendum. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Uh, any other comments? Seeing none, we have a motion to uh, close the meeting. So moved. Second. There we go. All in favor? Thank you. Aye. Thank you for coming. <laughs>